Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. You know, perhaps you've seen the Inquirer or maybe you've heard its basic charge. The charge is outrageous. Let's get right to it. Now, joining us is Dee Presley, who was Elvis's stepmother, Elvis Presley's stepmother. She was married to Elvis's father, Vernon, for 17 years. And she claims the real truth about Elvis is so shocking, so unbelievable, that she had to wait until now to reveal what she alleges was the king's deepest, darkest, and final secret. So before I even introduce the people sitting alongside her, let me get right to Dee Presley. Dee, what is the secret? The secret, the issue that we will be talking about today is the love between Gladys and Elvis, the incestuous love, that they were lovers. You allege that Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, had a sexual relationship with his own mother, Gladys. I know the truth. I was told by three closest to him. First, by Albert Holman. She lived with the Presleys and took care of Gladys until she died and remained on at Graceland for a few years after I came there. By Mother Presley, when I say Mother Presley, Vernon Presley's mother, Elvis's grandmother, and last, Vernon Presley himself. Your, your husband, ex-husband, my ex-husband, your, well, yes, he's passed yes, away now. Yes, the, that's the true. late Vernon uh, Presley. You yeah. allege Vernon even admitted it? Yes. It, this didn't happen instantly when I came to Graceland. It took a period of years and longer for Vernon to deal with it. Okay. You married Vernon in 1960. Yes. And you divorced Vernon shortly before Elvis himself died in No, 19... after. after. Oh, you, it, was, after, it was after, after the death. Elvis oh, I didn't know. Death, I thought yes, it was before um, the no. death. After. So you, but you were separated, weren't you at the time? Yes, I, I was legally separated for at least three years. From Vernon? From Vernon, yes. Okay, now during the time that you were with Vernon, you allege, and you know it sounds outrageous, the, uh, yes. you know that people yeah. adore Elvis, uh, many, many people, despite the facts and circumstances surrounding his later years, yes. the drug abuse, etc. Uh, so you're saying, you, you know, it's almost like... Uh, like spitting on an, ic an icon, you know. Yes. I don't want to uh, be judgmental about it. I want to be open-minded yes. about it, and I want to lead us through. I want you to yes. lead us through yes. uh, how you came to be yes. convinced that Elvis and his mom had an incestuous relationship. First of all, uh, now, you and Vernon never had any children. No, I had a miscarriage. Okay. Now, when you became pregnant, in 1961, yes. Okay, a year after your marriage to Vernon, uh, how did he respond to your pregnancy? Well, I had expected him to be happy to have a, a child. And of course, uh, he was not happy. He seemed to suspect that people would think that the child belonged to Elvis, which to me was unheard of at that time. I was not totally aware, but I knew there was some serious problems in the family because seemingly Vernon was more or less the outsider of the family. You're telling us that Vernon reacted in a, in a violent and very, negative way? Very, very violent, Thinking yes. that he Elvis... Might have fathered the child. And of course, uh, to me, I found that most disturbing at the time. But at the time that this took place, I did not know all the facts that was later revealed to me about the love affair between Elvis and his mother. It is shocking, and it's taken me a long time to deal with it. But I ran out of the house, and Vernon came in in a violent, drinking rage and shook me. And, of course, I was crying and ran out of the house and stumbled and fell. And, of course, I had the miscarriage. You're so that was my very first, very first inkling that things were not well. In that home? In that home. That it was a so-called dysfunctional home, right. you allege. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, now let's take, a, take us through the other sources. Alberta Holman? Alberta Holman, yes. The long time... Lost time, long time. Ma maid, yes, and yes. nanny mm -hmm. at, 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 Graceland. at what Graceland. What did she tell you? Well, actually, when I first came to Graceland, there was much talk about the unusual closeness between Ellis and Gladys. And at that time, of course, I didn't know that it had been an unusual closeness. But seemingly, they would come to a point about the closeness, and maybe someday Mr. 
Vernon will tell you, she would say. Okay, so Alberta suggested, suggested something unnatural had, about had, the closeness? Had taken place. Now, everyone knows, of course, that Elvis and his mom were very close. Uh, Elvis adored his mom and later took very good care of her. Didn't he buy Graceland? Uh, oh, yes, Gladys? yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a clip, a brief clip, of Elvis speaking of his adoration for his mom. It, it's just uh, 15 or 20 seconds. Let's, uh, let's roll that now, back to Elvis in 1956. I suppose since I was an only child, that we might have been a little closer. And Mother was always right with me all my life. A friend, a companion, someone to talk to. I could wake her up any hour of the night, and if I was worried or troubled about something, she'd get up and try to help me. Okay, now I have to say, Dee, that does not seem unnatural. He was an only child. I found nothing at all unnatural. That's the way that I myself felt. The very beginning of me questioning this relationship was when I was told that they shared the same bed until he was 16 or 17 years old. Now, Elvis slept, with literally his, slept literally in the same bed. Literally slept his with his mother. When I questioned this, I was told that Elvis had been a very sick child, that Gladys comforted him. Of course, in the early years, three and four years old, I still saw that that was not real, really a problem. But then I was told that he had nightmares and that Elvis did sleepwalk. Then I began to really question myself and ask myself why. But the point, Geraldo, that I would really like to make clear that Elvis was a victim. All right. Young before, and before you get into the victimization and all the jargon of, uh, of, of dysfunctional families, etc., uh, what you're saying here is on a different plane, D. You're saying that Elvis slept in the same bed as his mom. You do point out that he was a sickly child. So, again, that would not seem that aberrant, that abnormal. At the age of 16 or 17? Well, that's a different story. I had never heard that one. Well, I have, and it was the truth. And who told you that? Mother Presley, then Elvis's grandmother, Alberta, the maid, and Vernon himself. Okay, now one of the problems, of course, is that all three people have passed away. But why should I question? Really, Geraldo, why would Vernon lie? Did it Vernon himself years. ever admit to you that... Near the end, he did. What did he say exactly? He told me that he was always the outcast, the outsider, that it was always Gladys and Elvis. The love was always between the two, and that he had lived throughout his life a lie. But did Vernon actually specifically say, say to you that Gladys had sex with Elvis? Lovers. They were lovers. They slept in the same bed in the biblical sense. They were lovers. I think I met you back in 1979 when I was doing a, a kind of an expose about Elvis's drug mm -hmm. problems. Uh, in 1979, you wrote a book also, Elvis uh, Love Me Tender. Yes. Wasn't mm -hmm. that it? And you wrote it with, the, with your My boys. Th yes. Your, Elvis's mm -hmm. stepbrothers. Yes. Th Billy Ricky Rick and, and David. And Dave, Billy Rick right. and David. Uh, there is nothing like that in that book. No, there. Geraldo. I could not talk about it. If you noticed, I almost refused to talk about the drugs. It took me many years to ever speak about the drugs, the tragic happenings throughout Elvis' life, and I refused to talk about it. But I felt like that this issue needs to be dealt with, and I think that after dealing with this, we'll have a better insight. Now, the Inquirer cover, and let me just introduce, sitting next to Dee is Mike Walker. He's been on the program before. You've seen him. He's the editor of the National Enquirer, the magazine, actually, that broke this shocking story. This is the first of a five-part series. And also joining us is uh, Luane Satterfield. She is the co-author of, uh, of this coming book. Uh, this is excerpted from a book, I guess, to be called, what, The Intimate Life and Death, Death of Elvis. Of Elvis. Yes. Um, the, I told you before we went on the air, and I will state it in front of this audience and in front of millions of people out there, that I'm not here to pick on you. Uh, you know, there'll be people coming, uh, Elvis, uh, Elvis's uh, close friends and associates will be on this panel shortly, and uh, you'll have to deal with mm -hmm. their wrath. Uh, but let me just play the devil's advocate for 30 seconds, and, and, and please don't, uh, don't take this as, uh, as disrespectful. Your main source, sources, uh, 
Elvis's grandmother, Elvis's father, and the longtime the maid and side. nanny, yes. Alberta Holman, are all passed away. Uh, you wrote a book back in 1979. You made no mention of any of this aberrant behavior. Uh, isn't it possible now that you're doing this just to cash in on There's not enough this money in the world, Geraldo, salacious charge. that I would make me fabricate this story. No. It's a Do you understand issue? the implications of what you're saying? Yes. That Elvis, the king of rock and roll, the person yes. who we know was very, very troubled, to say that he was... He lived a troubled life. If this issue could have been dealt with 15 years ago, this would have been unheard of. It was taboo. But we're now at a time where this can be brought out and okay. talked about and discussed. Let me talk to uh, my uh, fellow reporter here, Mike Walker. Mike, you know I think that the National Enquirer gets a bad rap. I've said publicly, I will say a million times, I will say until hell freezes over, that I think you do at least as good a job as any of the mainstream news magazines in terms of accuracy. I think you get a bad rap, and I think it's easy to smear you because you're a supermarket tabloid. However, this kind of charge, as uncorroborated as any can possibly be, do you sit there confident that what you have printed is the truth? Well, people will always have a, a problem with this. We had the same reaction to this uh, that you're having. Um, and, of course, we were very cognizant of the fact that the three sources who could corroborate this are now gone, are passed away, and they're not here to, uh, to speak to this issue. On the other hand, uh, we, we looked for, as you always do in things like this, you look for the motive of the source, that's important, and we looked at uh, D. Presley, and and we said, well, you know, I mean, it, it isn't. It, we didn't think that it was strictly a money motivation. Uh, could be, of course, but we didn't think so. Also, D. Presley, and, and you'll forgive me for saying I don't want to put her on her on her deathbed, but D. Presley is, uh, I believe, you're 67 now. D. Is that yes, correct? Yes, right. And uh, at this point uh, in someone's life, I mean, people, uh, and again, <laughs> we hope you're going to be around for a great many years, but I'm just saying, as you approach, uh, you know, the end of your life, reporters often have the situation where people will come forward and things prey on their minds and they will, they will talk to them. We also did what you always try to do in this case. We tried to check all the checkable facts. In other words, everything that was checkable. We tried to take Dee's story and kind of knock it down was what we tried to do, as much as we could. I mean, obviously, we couldn't go to the central issue. And basically, we believe uh, that, that Dee Presley's story has been written. She wants to tell it. She's going to tell it somewhere. I mean, she certainly would have, I mean, the way things are going today, the Washington Post probably would have uh, excerpted this, uh, not just the National Enquirer. But we feel that we can see no clear reason why she would come forward and make such a shocking claim. The, sh the, the shock of it alone almost helps to propel you into the belief that, uh, that, that she must be telling the truth. I mean, why would she lie? She knows full well what she's uh, going to face from fans. My own wife, when she heard this, said, this time you've gone too far. What do far. you think? <laughs> Is it yes? Applaud if it yes. True? False applaud. All right, stop. If I could say one other thing. Um, first of all, Elvis Presley sleeping with his mother uh, was also reported in Albert Goldman's book. As far as I was always concerned, Albert Goldman's book said that Elvis was sleeping with his mother. I mean, he didn't quite say it, but the implication was very clear. Uh, I have heard that charge before, that Elvis did sleep with his mother. And I'm sorry, a boy sleeping with his mother until he's 16 or 17 years old is bizarre and unnatural. Also, there were many lies surrounding Elvis Presley's life. I remember you years ago fighting, and I watched you on television many, many years ago, fighting against what you saw were facts coming out. You, you did not want to believe that Elvis Presley was on drugs at sure. one point. Sure. I remember that. You, you sure. really tried to deny that. It was very tough. There were a lot of lies around Elvis's life. A lot of things about his sex life were brought out again in Goldman's book. So this is not totally and completely coming out of a vacuum. Let me show you a brief clip now of Vernon Presley, Dee's husband. Uh, when did Vernon pass away? 1979. 79, so just 79. two years after, after. your mm -hmm. divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, Vernon talking a little bit, just to give you an idea of the man toward the end of his life. This is Vernon talking about his divorce from Gladys and later marriage to Dee. Roll that, Jimbo. I uh, lived with him till my wife died in 1958, his mother, which we had uh, 
been married for 27 years. And, uh, and in 1958, he went to Germany in service. I went over there with him. And when we come back in 1960, I remarried. That's when I moved out of Graceland. And I haven't lived in Graceland since then. Okay, so again, we point out that Vernon and Dee did not live at Graceland. What she is reporting is what she heard. And in a sense, you're extrapolating from your own experience when his violent but, reaction. But just a minute, Harada, I did live at Graceland. And what years did you? 1960. I moved out before 62, bought our own home. I did not look forward to moving into Graceland. I found it very difficult. Was, so, was Elvis's mother's room still sealed at that time? Yes. Everything had been left untouched in her room. And, and the was, door locked? Yes. And I never went into the room until I had been there, after I'd come there sometime. Okay, you can tell us about that visit into Gladys's tomb, in a sense. Uh, we're going to be joined uh, by some people who you will recognize in, uh, in a couple of minutes to give the other side of the story. We're talking about the king's deepest, darkest secret. That's the focus of this edition of Feraldo. <laughs> Again, before I get to your question, I, I might have said that uh, Vernon divorced Gladys. Vernon didn't divorce Gladys. Gladys, uh, Gladys passed away. But I, I want to go back. Um, I'm going to quote from the Inquirer now before I introduce our esteemed uh, other guests. This is about the night that Dee uh, came home and uh, tells us that uh, she told Vernon that she was pregnant. This is Vernon's reaction. He grabbed Dee by the shoulders and shook her. He said, tell me, Dee, whose baby is it? Is it Elvis? Tell me now. I want to know if it's Elvis's baby. And he was ranting and raving. Vernon's mother, Mother Presley, appeared. She grabbed Vernon and quieted them down with these startling words. Uh, this is a quote from the Inquirer story. Vernon, you sit down and shut up. If you don't, I'm going to tell Dee everything. Do you hear me? Everything. I will tell her all the deep, dark secrets of this family that you prayed she would never find out. I won't leave out one little detail. I'm going to tell her right this minute, right in front of you. If you don't sit down and shut up. That's the end of the quote attributed to Mother Presley. Uh, that's when Dee runs outside and falls and has the miscarriage. Uh, okay, now after that, uh, Dee tells us that she and Mother Presley became closer. She told Dee that the reason Gladys began to abuse alcohol, her well-known uh, alcohol problem, was because she missed Elvis so much. Gladys was so attached to him that she couldn't take the separation. Then, uh, then Mother Presley tells Dee, quote, until Elvis was in his teenage years, until he was way up in high school, they slept together most of the time, uh, she said. Uh, D asks, Mother, you mean Vernon and Gladys, don't you? No, honey, I mean Elvis and Gladys slept together, and I mean in a biblical sense. Those two had a close relationship. I mean real close. All right, that's right from the Inquirer story. It's laid out. What do you think? What I want to know is, uh, Lee, did Priscilla, D, D. D, did Priscilla know what was going on, and did it continue during their marriage? During Priscilla's and Elvis's marriage? Oh, uh, Gladys died in 1958. Did Priscilla know anything? I'm not sure. I want to know, if you're not doing it for the money or the publicity, why would you even bother? I think the truth should be known. Let me look at this. I'd love to hear this. Yes. The truth should yeah. be known. <laughs> that gentleman is the esteemed country music star. That's J.D. Souther right there. He is Souther, rather. Uh, Sumner, really love, Sumner, J.D. Sumner. J.D. and Elvis were best friends since Elvis was 14. J.D. Sumner. J.D. is JD. a well-known uh, uh, singer. And, uh, no. Everybody lived a lie. Truth. Sitting next no, to him, you, Joe Esposito. You're the, you're the only one that lived a lie. No, I'm not hurting you. Joe Esposito is a close friend and confidant of Elvis. J.D. Sumner, best friend since early on. Why would you not deny if you ever heard of this, J.D.? We're not talking about drugs. We're talking about your Popeye's lie about him sleeping with his mama. How can you sit there, how can you sit there in America watching you 
and tell such a blooming how, lie. How could That's you sit there and let him die with the drugs and not realize? I knew him long before you did. You probably did. I was sung at his mother's funeral. I attended church with his mom and him. And you are lying, lady. I was you told have repeated by a lie. I was told You're by. You're lying. How do we know? I was told by. Let, let, Wait a minute. First of all, I would love... Joe Esposito. Geraldo, I would love to. When I got the phone call about Monday about this article, you have no idea how upset and I am as of today. You had to know Elvis Presley, and I'm surprised that she is really doing this. I never thought she would do this. She is sitting here making this story up in the first place. You know, uh, if we had a lie detector test, that's what I really like to see her do right in front of us. She, yeah. Yeah. I was told by her own sons, which I talked to yesterday, her own son, Ricky, and David, they think she's out of her mind. Her own kids. Now, I was told I don't, by them that she got $100,000 from the National Enquirer for this five story. Now, ask her. Ask him. He'll tell you. She has no publisher for the book, as I was told. And I think she's doing this for a publishing deal. She's broke. Her own boys told me she's broke. And she's doing it for money. What other reason is to do this? What would, what would this help? How, how's this going to help anybody if Elvis slept with his mother? E even, even if it were so, even if the first nth degree was so, which it is not, it would take a low down person to reveal such stuff. Okay, hold you two. Cool, 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 cool. I'm really mad. I'm cool. sorry. I know. That's okay. We got plenty of show. Okay. Mike, you want to respond before we go to commercial? Yes. Well, as to uh, did we pay D. Presley uh, money? Yes, we did. Uh, there was syndication rights involved. We did not pay her a hundred thousand uh, dollars. But as to the the question, we didn't pay her anything. As as to the question of uh, is she lying or is she not? I would simply like to ask, outside of the fact that. Uh, both of these gentlemen, like my own wife, uh, did not want to hear this charge, but how do they know that it is not true, other than saying that Elvis Presley was not the kind of person who would do this, and why would she say this? Okay, let me ask you this. She says Vernon told her, mm -hmm. Alberta the maid told her, right. and Elvis's grandmother. And, and tell, first of all, Vernon, an outcast in his family, Vernon and Elvis had the greatest relationship in the world. Elvis loved Vernon, and he told us many times only reason I put up with Dee Presley is because she's married to my father. Quote by him. He said he never was thrilled with Dee. She came after him because she wanted him. And he said, I'll put up with her as long as she's around, but she'll never take my mother's place and I'll never call her what mother. Do you mean, what do you mean she came after him? Before? What, are, what are you talking well, about? Well, okay. She was married in Germany at the time to a sergeant in the army when Vernon married her. When which Vernon she, met her. Which she tried to seduce she, Vernon to leave her husband with. He did. She was married then. Oh. Well, she left him for Vernon. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? What? She left him for Vernon. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to make a comment. I, speaking for myself, I don't care whether it's true or not. This man is great. Uh, he's brought uh, great joy to my life. I love this music, and I always will. I don't see why she's bringing this up at all. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference to me whether it's true or not. Louis, this is the co-writer of the book. Do you uh, have a publisher? No, sir, not that I know of. Okay. But I would like to make something clear, that this book has been in the works for over two years, and this is a small incident in the book. The book was not designed to assassinate Elvis in any way. It has been Dee's story, her love story with Vernon, and the story of her three sons going from drugs back to the ministry. Uh, it's filled with a lot of faith. It's filled with a lot of hope. It's filled with a lot of God. 
these things came out as she was going through a catharsis. I've worked with her for 24 months and I have seen her grow and come out so I have no reason to doubt. There were many worse things that she could have put in there. Oh my God, don't even mention that. That she, what else? That she yeah. said no. Um, Geraldo, I would just why like to say that it I think it, take, it took a lot of courage for Dee to come out and make an accusation like this. I think that, no, I, I think that uh, she, she's going to face a lot of personal abuse and just outright hostility for this, and no amount of money is worth what she has, is going to have to go through. That's not true. That's, 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 not, true. that's not true when you don't have any money. You got to eat. That's not true. You don't do this from, you don't make this kind of a, a, a book for, for, take courage. It's to make money. She's claiming he's gay in the damn thing. She claims he had, he had gay. He, he was gay. I haven't read the whole book, so I don't know, El but it Elvis says in the Presley paper. Elvis is already a historical figure. He is already someone that we study, that we look at. We just dug up Zachary Taylor, for God's sake, to see if he, anybody had assassinated him during his tenure as president. I mean, the same thing is going to happen. If this charge is not true, then it won't stand the test of time and history. On the other hand, it is part of history. Everything else has been dug up about Elvis. If this isn't true, that will come out. But this is part of history, and it would explain all yep. the dysfunction and how he ended up the way yeah, he ended you, up. You mentioned, you mentioned that Goldman had written something similar to the same thing. Goldman book is a lie. I, I, I was involved in Goldman. He even took some statements I made and made a lie out of them. Mm -hmm. It's either the truth or it's a lie. There's no gray area. When you call a man a homosexual, and when you say a man sleeps, with his mother, mm -hmm. I just wonder that Judith portrayed Jesus Christ and got 30 pieces of silver. J.D., well, did, did, Elvis, did Elvis sleep with his mother? Did I'm, Elvis, I'm getting back did to Elvis back sleep with his mother, though, in, in, I slept with my mother in too. a bed? No, no, until you were 16 and 17. No, no, no. Until you were 16 and 17. Can I ask one question? Yeah, ask Dee a question. Did Vernon say when Elvis slept with Gladys that he slept with her till she was till he was 16 or 17? He said those specific words. Joe, I'm asking you. Yes. He said he, said he slept with her till she was 16 and they, 17 years yes, old. Yes, and she was his. They were love. They were making. They were so they were lovers. They had sex. They were lovers. They had that sex. You're this trying to had say. Happen. Listen, Joe. I don't those believe that Vernon was a kind of man to yes. have lived in that environment. I love my mother too. The story is that Gladys herself, listen please to the story, was from an incestuous family. Well, now, I did not. If you really want to get into that. No, no. Forget really, that. come on. Dee, what I'm trying to say is this, Dee. Yes, were, yes. Was Vernon in the room? When you say they were yes. lovers, Vernon saw them? They were in the bed, and then Vernon knew that there was oh. this love. Take a break. I can't believe Vernon Take would a break. say Take that. Take a break. Go. Pull him down. The clip just builds the impression of once in a lifetime. Yes, good. I would like to know how come Vernon thought that Elvis was the father of your child? Are you sure it wasn't the stepmother that was sleeping with him? I have never. <laughs> Now, J.D., you alluded to, you allege that D flirted with Elvis. That he, that what? That D flirted with Elvis in oh. Germany. No, I, I said that she was living with her first husband, Mr. Stanley, which I wish she'd go back using that name <laughs> instead of question. She was living with him when she went after Vernon, and going after Vernon, she was after Elvis. Okay. Uh, let me just say one thing. Number one, I address you as Mrs. Stanley because you don't deserve to have the Presley name. If, thank you. If Stanley, if Stanley was written on that book, it wouldn't sell. Number one, this book isn't going to sell because remember, your brass, brass can tarnish. You'll never tarnish gold. Remember that. What I'd like to know is on the cover, as forbidden love led to uh, her death, uh, are you trying to insinuate that this guilt killed her? I don't understand that at all. Gladys yes. also felt the guilt. But Gladys was also uh, an innocent victim. An innocent victim at an early age. You're not giving her a chance. Please, if you'll Give sit down. Chance. Elvis, I mean, I'm sorry. Gladys also had the problem of drinking and the diet pills. So the mixture 
she could not deal with the guilt. But that's your theory, right, Dee? You don't know that for a fact. I was told, why should I distrust the people that told me? It's the truth, Geraldo. It was told to me as truth, and I have no doubt to, no doubt in my mind. Dee, between you and your, Dee, between you and your sons, this is the fifth book that has been written by your family. When's it going to end? I have it's not the fifth wrote book. one. You wrote one, Elvis, We Love You Tender, and each of your sons wrote their own book, and this is the fifth. You know, come on, the well's got to run dry sooner or later. Well, the now the truth, for the first time, the truth has been dealt with. What, the other ones were lies? This is for J.D. Uh, uh, um, quiet, please. My understanding is you were friends with Elvis when he, you were young. How young? No, not really. No, no, no JD. for J.D. Oh. When he was 14 years old. Well, it, if you were a 14-year-old when you were 14, not if me. your mother was abusing you or sleeping with you, having incest with you, would you go and tell Elvis that? It's an embarrassing situation for Elvis. I'm not saying it was true. If it was or if it wasn't, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. But if this situation happened to you, would you be telling your friends? You wouldn't. If, if, I, if this had happened to me, that I was sleeping with my mother? Yes. Well, I, my, my mind can't go there. You're right. You're right. Uh, but when, when Elvis was 14 years old, he couldn't conceive I, of this I either. I knew Gladys. She did not know Gladys. I went to church with Gladys. I sang at Gladys's funeral. We were supposed to sing three songs. They were a very religious family. They had a glass covering over her coffin. Elvis laid over her coffin and said, Mama, I'd give everything I got in the world and dig ditches the rest of my life just to bring you back for five minutes. And then for somebody to come up here and tell a blasted, blooming, confounded lie like that is sickening and disgusting. And every time... Take a break. Elvis Uncensored is what the Enquirer calls it. It is Dee Presley's shocking allegation of incest in the Presley home. Uh, Jan White Whitez is an expert. She's the author of Healing Your Sexual Self. She's an expert in the field of mother-son relationships. By bringing on an expert, we don't uh, in any way give additional credence to Dee's charge, but I do say, could you stand up again, young lady? Stand up again. She, she made a good point. Let's, let's face it. As much as we loathe the charge, if, in fact, the charge was true, who would speak about it? Isn't that, Jan, in fact, and again, the fact that there's an expert on incest or relationships doesn't mean that we give any credence to it except to say, Jan, aren't they always the deepest, darkest secret? Yeah, and I'm surprised that so many people would know about it because treating families where incest is involved is so difficult because the only people that really know what's going on are the people involved themselves, and they don't talk about it. Okay, now you make, a, you make what ironically may be the most damning charge of all. Do you say that by saying that the maid knew about it, the husband knew about it, and the, the grandma knew about it, that's unlikely? I think it's real peculiar. I think the relationship that he had with his mother was very enmeshed and probably made it difficult for him to find other women as desirable as she. But I'd be very surprised that this information would go around a family. The tightness, yes. Even if it's true that, that they were, even if it were true that they were sleeping together in the same bed, not necessarily having sexual intercourse, even then would you find it strange if everybody knew this was going on? These behaviors are generally kept so close that that's what makes it so hard for but them to this treat. Wouldn't make you think of it if you saw that I kind would of behavior? Think would you not be suspicious as an expert if you saw a teenage boy sleeping with his mother in the same I bed? I would think that the relationship he had with his mother was a little bit too close mm -hmm. to be usual. Yes. These charges okay. are a little bit more extreme oh, of course. than we usually mm -hmm. hear. So but it might be an indication. We never know. We can't really tell. We you, know that you don't want trouble. to venture a guess, do you, Jan? I, I have no way of knowing, but it just doesn't, it isn't even necessary or relevant. We know that there was a very intimate relationship. We know that he was troubled. We know that there was alcohol in the family, and he behaved as 
the adult child of an alcoholic would. So these details uh, don't really have a lot of meaning except uh, to, uh, to bring out things that don't make necessarily any sense. It's not the kind of conversation that people tell people about. In your uh, capacity as an expert, do you find that f charges like this are often brought falsely by other members of the family? Is that a normal thing? It happens and it doesn't happen. It depends on what their motive is. I mean, if there's a hundred grand at stake, though, I think it would probably be more likely to bring it out. Hold it, hold it, come on. I didn't, I didn't do that. I don't want this H to Geraldo. be like a dance meeting. First hold on, let me introduce two other people. Okay. Bill Burke met Elvis in 57, continued a relationship, we're told, until his death. He's written 400 articles on Elvis, three books. He's the editor of Elvis World. It's a magazine sitting next to him. Uh, Janelle McComb, she's known Elvis the longest. She's known him since Tupelo, since uh, he was two years old. Uh, you're very upset, aren't you, Janelle? You know? I can't hear very well. Are you very upset at this charge? Are you very upset, honey? Are you are, upset? Are, 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 you very up, are you very upset about this? Oh, I, I just can't. I've known Elvis Presley since I was two years old. The same doctor that delivered him delivered my brother and sister. We went out on the third night he was born. I was in that house until they left Tupelo. Uh, they lived on Kelly, Adams, and Barry, 1010 North Green when they left. Uh, when we're talking about a depression, Geraldo, you're not talking about an indention in somebody's face. You're talking about people who don't have enough to eat, enough beds. Uh, my brother slept with my mother. We have a picture, actually, mother. of the Tupelo house. That's my where I mentioned it. My brother Ellen. slept with my mother from necessity. Um, that's exactly right. And if it wasn't for Can those two rooms, time? there wouldn't be yeah. a soul here today. I want you to say that, that again. Your brother <clears throat> slept with your... My brother slept with my mother because we didn't have enough to eat when the Depression came. And I slept on a pallet and so did my dad on the other side. Uh, there was nothing incestuous about this. And uh, if you'll stop and think about it, um, you look back when Christ was on the cross, who did he think about in the end? Behold thy mother my mother, take care of my mother. That goes, that's biblical. Uh, I'm a boy mom, a boy mama's attack. Uh, and if my son right now at the age of 46 needed me, if he needed me and there was no beds and there was, he needed me to comfort him, if he needed me in any way, he's little to me and I would be there. <laughs> Bill, what do you say? Come on, I know you're a big Elvis fan. You're here just to love the guy, right? I, I was never an Elvis fan, quote. I was an Elvis friend. And I knew the man for 20 years, and uh, I've written quite a bit about him. In the research on the book I did on the Humes years, which is the high school years, which puts us into Dee's teenage uh, accusations here, uh, no one that uh, were Elvis's closest friends around the Humes high school years they said this thing about Elvis sleeping with Gladys. They never saw this, and they stayed over at the house a lot, and they never saw this, and they they just, they just can't believe. So this. you're saying that you you have eyewitnesses in the house that the, say that they didn't during sleep. the high school years that they never slept together. Also, so that would in, be 14, in, 15. Right, and also in the story this printed very Hurry quickly. Quick, I've got to take okay, a break, please. In the story this printed, uh, Dee says that she ran outside the house and fell down, and Anita Wood picked her up, and that's when she had the miscarriage not because Anita picked her up, but I talked to Anita last night and Anita has no recollection of this whatsoever. I never knew she was pregnant. Take a break. I want to briefly uh, mention three quick semi-commercial announcements. Number one, the highly controversial Inquirer series Part two of five uh, next week and et cetera for the next, I guess, four weeks. Uh, so that's the Inquirer on, on sale in your supermarket uh, or wherever else. Uh, J.D. Sumner has a new uh, CD out. Uh, Peace in the Valley, is it, J.D.? Yeah, I, I record with a Benson company on the River Song label and uh, still doing a lot of dates. And yeah, our new CD devil. is Peace in the Valley. That's it. And, and you know, Joe Esposito's never written a book. Uh, as a matter of fact, Joe uh, has been the fiercest Elvis defender. I mean, Joe didn't admit anything until he was drag kicking and screaming. So I, I, I say he is finally now writing a book. It's uh, Elvis and the Memphis Mafia, which should be interesting. We can look for that next year.
This will okay. be a chapter. And this will be a chapter. Yeah. Uh -huh. The question that I wanted to ask was, or I actually wanted to make a statement about Gladys Presley. Everyone knows if they followed the tabloids years ago that she had a very bad heart. Isn't it possible that Elvis slept with her to give her her medication because he loved his mother so? Vidi, I'm going to let you talk for the next minute. That's all I have in the segment. Well, <clears throat> at the age of 17, 16 or 17, there again, I would rather think this strange and unusual. I am only telling what was told to me by three people that I have no cause to doubt. I felt like that this troubled Vernon, it troubled the entire family. Okay, Dee, I want you to look right here. Here's the American people right here. Now, Chris is going on. All right, now, Dee, tell them that you want them, tell them they want, that you want them to believe you. I want them to believe it because it is a truth. I want them to also, the point that I'm trying to get across, that Elvis was an innocent victim. Vernon was a victim, and Gladys was a victim. This subject was never mentioned, could not be discussed. And well, Vernon being the closest, Vernon right. was the closest one to me, Joe, pardon me, the most intimate relationship, and he okay. shared. J.D., you got 20 seconds. They're, they're the American people. If you, think, if you don't think anything of your own family and your own boys, which you, you have made sick, you have almost ruined your son's ministry, which he's a good kid. What about Lisa Marie? Did you ever love her? Let's get back to Did the... Did you ever have any feeling for Lisa let's, Marie? I loved, I loved all of them. But, J.D., let's take it back. My sons we can't have... Take it back. No, 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 no. The point, J.D., nobody lived. Everybody around Elvis lived a lie. I have been as Everybody, sorry as you can get. I have been sorry, too, about the situation and you do I a, have you're still felt. doing a good job. Well, this issue has to be... Take a break. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I've got 25 seconds left. All I want to do and uh, all there is time for without any further editorializing is to thank our guests for coming on, starting uh, with you, Janelle. Thank you. I know you love the king. Bill is old high school uh, chum. Joe, uh, forever there for Elvis J.D., uh, what a man. Uh, Mike Walker, the skilled editor of The Inquirer. D, uh, you've said it. The cat's out of the bag. You have to live with it now. And Luane, our co-writer. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. King of Rock and Roll. See you next time. Bye-bye.